Hello there and welcome back to my video series on making a car in Godot. In this one we're going to cover the really smooth uh, chase camera. So you can see from the video I'm showing you now, this is what it's going to look like at the end. It just smoothly moves around and follows the direction that the car is going. Uh, it also stays uh, up as the car uh, changes its orientation so that we don't get all confused. So let's get to it. So the first thing we want to do is we're just going to take a look at this car. What we want to do is take the camera off for now, just for a second, um, so that it's part of the game rather than the car. I'm just going to quickly rename this to camera with a lowercase c just to keep things consistent. Um, then we want to take uh, the car, we want to add a child node of that, and we'll just use a standard spatial node. And this is going to be our camera pivot. So we're just going to rename that to camera underscore pivot. This camera pivot is going to be the sort of um, place that the camera is going to be anchored to. So uh, what we'll do is just take the uh, camera and place it onto the pivot so that it moves with it. And we can position it relative to that camera pivot. So you want to just uh, select the camera uh, now and just move that back into a position that you're, you're comfortable with. Um, I'm going to just rotate it down so I can see this a little bit better and I'll just quickly uh, test it to make sure that it looks uh, pretty good and that it's where I'm pretty happy with its position. And next comes the fun bit. So let's add a script to the camera for it. Uh, make sure this is a, an empty script. And I'm happy with the name as camera pivot and click create. Now when it's up and running, we're going to create our first uh, variable. So let's create a variable called direction. And this will be a vector 3. And we'll just initialize that vector 3 to being forward. And uh, this is going to track our direction that we're traveling in. Now we're going to run everything inside of the uh, physics process. So if you just do func underscore physics process, and the first thing we need to do is we need to get the current velocity. So let's create a variable for that. So we'll call this current velocity. And we can do that from the parent because the parent's going to be this rigid body, this car. So we say get parent dot and then we can use um, this get linear velocity uh, function that you can find inside the documentation. And that will just get the actual current linear velocity of the rigid body as it stands right now. And we kind of need that so we know which direction we're going in. And we can move the camera in res as a result. Next, we'll be get the current velocity and just zero out the um, y velocity. We don't want to have any tracking of velocity up and down, so we'll zero that out. And then we want to just get the uh, direction uh, variable that we created at the top, and we want to just lerp that to the um, actual current velocity. So we need the negative current velocity um, so that we're able to do the, the forward direction, if you remember from the last tutorial. I want to normalize that vector as well. And we're just going to slurp by uh, 2.5 times delta. So that's just the rate that it's going to move um, towards its target of uh, of the current velocity. So the next bit's the fun bit. So we do want to try and set the rotation of this camera pivot so that it points in the direction that we're actually moving. But the issue, the problem with that is that um, one of them is a velocity vector and the other one is an actual rotation. So how are we going to do that? Well, I um, could bore you with this, but we'll just go through writing this function. So I'm going to create a function that will return that basis for me. I'm going to call it get rotation from direction. And all it's going to need to do is it's going to need to um, take in that vector, which is a direction, and it's going to have to return a new basis. So this uh, new function here, get rotation from direction, <clears throat> we're going to um, just take in a vector and we're going to call that uh, the look direction. I'm going to force it and with the colon vector 3. I'm going to force this to be an actual vector 3 just so there's no mistakes. And I'm also going to force it to return a basis, which is a rotation, um, just by doing that uh, funny arrow basis. The first thing we need to do with that uh, look direction is just make sure that it's uh, normalized. So if we just do look direction, um, equals look direction uh, dot normalize. That makes sure it's a, a unit vector. And uh, to create a basis, you do need an x, a y, and a z. So we're going to need a, an x axis variable here that we're going to calculate based on the um, the look direction and then the cross product of the look direction uh, and the um, forward 
uh, so the up direction, the world up. So if you just type in this line, this they will also calculate that um, perpendicular vector for us. And then with those uh, those three vectors, we can actually return that basis. So we'll create a new one. So we'll return basis, and then we pass in the uh, the x axis, the y axis, which is just uh, the up direction, the world up direction. So vector three dot up, and the um, and the look direction, and that will give us the actual rotation basis that we need uh, to be able to set the rotation of the camera pivot. I know it's a wee bit confusing, lots of vector maths, but uh, trust me, it just does work. Uh, now all we need to do is set the um, global uh, transform. So if you do a uh, global transform dot basis, so this is the global rotation of this object, which is our camera pivot, and we'll make that equal to, and we'll use our new function, our whole uh, new get rotation from direction function, and pass in that direction variable that we've uh, calculated in the previous few lines. So it should work now. Um, if you just test it, you should see that uh, the camera does uh, follow. It kind of drifts around as it goes, so it's pretty good. But it could still do with some improvements, so let's just do that. Part one of that is we want to just make sure that it uh, doesn't try and interpret the direction all the time. So uh, just before the direction line here, just let's make sure that we're actually moving at some velocity. So we'll just do a quick if statement and we'll say if current velocity, um, and we'll use the length of that vector and we'll use length squared because it's a bit faster. So if, if it's actually moving, um, then if that's greater than a certain volume, just use one for no apparent reason, then we want to set this direction vector to uh, to LERP um, every single frame. So that way it won't change all the time. And lastly, this um, LERP amount, um, let's make this a variable. So we'll make an export variable so it appears in the uh, in the inspector. So we'll make this an export var, we'll call this um, smooth speed, and we'll just set it to that default value of 2.5, which I quite liked. And then we can use that variable down here instead. So we can change this now um, in the inspector. One little tip as well, if you want a little slider, uh, what you can do is you can add in just right in here, you can add in the type that you want. So float the start value and then a comma and then the end value and then the step that you want. So this gives us, uh, as you can see in the inspector, if we go here, this gives us this little slider that can go up and down by that amount, which uh, makes it a Lot easier to tweak. So there we have it, that's a fully functional drift camera that works with a Godot car. Hopefully you're enjoying um, these videos, please like and subscribe, and if you leave some comments it will give me an idea of any other content that you'd like to see me cover. Thanks for watching.